All right, today we're gonna to dive a little bit deeper into Sketch and learn about alignment, spacing, and some shared styles. So let's get started. All right, so we have Sketch open. We're gonna keep it simple today and just create a simple input form for an address on say an iPhone 7. So let's go ahead and create an artboard by hitting A and then we're gonna select iPhone 7. So that is gonna create our artboard where we're gonna create this address form input field. Address form input form. Address form, let's just, let's just call it an address form from this point onwards. Look, let's start by actually just writing down the types of fields that we're gonna to need to create our address form. So I'll create a little paragraph over here on the left hand side outside of our actual artboard and using the inspector we'll change the size of the font to something a little more appropriate say 14 point and we'll make it regular instead of bold. Cool. So now we're just going to write down the types of fields that we know we're going to need to capture in order to create our address form. So we know that we'll need a street number and a street name. We will need a suburb, a city, a postcode, and let's say we'll need a country. Now, FYI, this is the format for an Australian address. So I apologize in advance if I'm triggering anyone right now because their address formats look different. Okay, cool. So let's also say that up here, we also, maybe we need their name. So we probably need a first and a last name. Now, Based on these requirements, we can start to kind of build the rough outline of these input fields. So we'll press R, which will bring up our rectangle tool, and then we will create a series of input fields. So we'll just make them roughly the right size for now. Now to create additional fields from this single field, I'm just going to hold the Alt key and then click and drag on that field. And you'll see that it creates or duplicates that field. So I'll do that once, so we can assume that we've got, perhaps we've got a first name, last name, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold command and press D, which will duplicate that, that duplication essentially. So now we have three fields, and if we count down our list, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields altogether. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. So now we have eight fields. Now I'm going to briefly touch on this concept called affordance. And if you'd like to know more about affordance in UI design, then I have a whole other video on that that you can check out around form design basics. But that's not the point of this video, so we'll only briefly touch on it. The point of this video is to teach you how to use Sketch. So let's carry on. We know that, for example, a street number field doesn't need to be the full width of this page. We're not expecting that their street number is going to be as many characters long as their street name, for example. So what we can do is we can make that field shorter. Cool. We also know that, so this one it will be their street name, this one will be their suburb, their city, and their postcode. So we know the postcode will also be a bit smaller. Maybe not as small as their number, but we'll... We'll leave it like that. We also know that perhaps their name may not be as long as say the street name. So looking at this kind of structure of our form, we can see that we have, let's just go ahead and say we have three different sizes of input fields. So we have really long ones, we have medium ones, and then we have short ones. What I'll do now is I'll actually select all of these fields and then using the inspector up here, we will actually make the height not something random like 33 high. We're going to change that height figure to be, let's say 35 high. So we'll hit that and you see all of the selected fields update. So they're now all 35 high. We're going to select these three longer ones and then we're going to hold shift and select the bottom longer one. And we're going to make those, we'll make them 300 wide. Similarly, we're going to select the first and last name fields and we'll make them 250 wide. We will select the street number and the postcode and knowing that the postcode is 145, we'll make those 150 long. Cool. Now we know that we need some labels, right? 
So what we'll do is we'll actually spread these out a little bit. So I'll grab the bottom one and drag that down, holding shift to make sure that it stays in line. And then we will grab all of these fields and then up here in our inspector, right up the top there, we see distribute vertically. So we'll click that and you'll see it spreads them all out. So what it does is it grabs the, the uppermost object and the bottom most object and then distributes everything evenly between those two points. Cool. I will just grab everything and move it up slightly. And then we will start to create some labels here. So I'm going to press T to select the text tool and then click above our first field and I'm going to write first name. Now with the first name label being there, I'm going to do the same thing that we did earlier with duplicating the fields themselves. So I'm going to hold the alt key and I'm going to click and drag on that first name field until it, you know, it gets somewhere near where we want it to be. As you see, it's snapping into place here. And what's going to happen is if I let go here, and then we duplicate, it's going to be a little bit off, but that's fine. We know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight fields. So we can grab this bottom one, and then it's going to hold shift and press the down arrow, which moves it down in larger chunks. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. And then I'm going to hold shift and unselect all of the input fields so that we're just left with the field labels. And then I'm going to do the same thing we did earlier, distribute vertically. Now this is something funny in sketch. So if it can't work out exactly to the pixel where to place objects, it says, do you want to distribute them slightly unevenly? So they'll be off by one pixel, literally, or do you want to place them on sub pixels? So it doesn't really matter. Let's just go distribute unevenly close enough. Cool. What we'll do now is we'll just change the name of all these fields to be correct. Cool. Now let's start actually aligning these things properly. So we're going to grab these and we're going to put them all flush against the top of the field themselves. Cool. And then we're going to do the same thing we did earlier by grabbing everything. And then we're going to unselect all of the fields by holding shift and we're going to just move it up. We'll move it up a little bit. So now what we're going to briefly talk about is how to use shared styles. So we'll click on that top input input field and we're going to create a new shared style. So over here in the inspector, we have no shared style selected. Now we're going to create a new shared style. We're going to call that input field. Great. Now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to just change how this field looks. So we'll, we're going to add a border radius to it. So we'll just make that four just to give it a little bit of a softer corners. We're going to change the fill to be a lot less dark. So it doesn't look disabled and we're going to darken up that border. Yeah, it's about right. Cool. And Hell, let's go ahead and put an inner shadow on it just to give it a little bit of a depth of feel or a little bit of a, an additional affordance there. So I'm actually going to change that shadow color to be only 25% opaque so it really softens it off and there we go. Cool so now what we're going to do is we're going to update that shared style so we're going to click on this little refresh button next to the shared style menu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the input fields that don't have that style and then we're going to add that style to them. Cool. Now you may have noticed that it hasn't actually inherited that rounded corners. So we're going to have to add that manually. So we'll select everything and then we will just add a border radius of four to all of those objects. Perfect. Now let's select everything and we will actually align it so that we know that everything is centrally aligned on this page so that the margin between the left hand edge and the right hand edge is the same. Now we can actually check that by selecting everything and holding the alt key and then moving our mouse close to one of the edges. So now you see that it is 42 pixels away from the left hand edge, 38 from the right. Their fields are 38 down and there's a 60 pixel margin on the bottom. 
Now what we want to do is we want to actually center that. So what we can do is we can just, using the arrow keys, move these along until they are around about right. So something like that. Or what we can do is group everything and then just hit the center align button. So we can, to show you that in action, we can hit the right align button, which the right aligns it, and we can center align it by clicking the center align. Now, the reason we have to group that is, I'll show you why. If we ungroup that by holding Command Shift G, ungroups everything. If we center that, it will center every object individually amongst itself, basically. It will ignore the artboard and actually just center align the objects to one another. Now we can simply undo that or just go back to what we had by either hitting Control Z or we know that everything was left aligned before. So we will just use the align left function in the inspector. Cool. Now what we'll do and what I suggest doing here is actually grouping these fields and their labels as a group. So we'll just select both of these and then hit Command and G. So hold Command, press G. Command G. Command G. Command G. Command G. Command G. And Command G. Cool. Now if you're like me and actually like to keep things organized, You'll see over here that in our layer list, everything is bottom up and nothing is labeled correctly. So let's just quickly go ahead and change all of our labels to match what the fields actually are. Cool. And now we will just click and drag on that country layer and drag it to the bottom. Now be careful here. If you notice that blue line with the dot that appears is going to show you where it's going to go. You don't want to accidentally put it inside the first name layer. So you can actually see that this blue line here is slightly indented uh, a little bit more than say if we move it to the left here and then it jumps over to the left. It's kind of hard to notice. That's the jump there. And you want it to be to the left, so less indented. And that will actually move it to the underneath that folder. If we put it here, it will actually go inside the first name folder. So we want to keep it on the left here. And there you go, it goes underneath that name. So we can do that by also moving first name to the top, last name underneath first name, street name underneath last name, etc, etc. There you go, now everything's in order and somewhat organized. Now one last thing that we'll touch on is just to show you kind of the power of shared styles. So. Let's duplicate this by using the same key as before. So we'll hold down Alt and we'll hold down Shift and we will just click and drag on that artboard. So now we have iPhone 7 copy. We'll call this one. So we'll see in our layers list here, we also have our artboards listed. So we can just double click on that and change it to address form. We'll change this one to, I don't know, identity form. Cool. And instead of street number, we will have their age, perhaps their gender, and perhaps their favorite drink. Cool. And then we'll get rid of these. And we'll update our layer names as well. Now, we have two separate artboards, and we have a bunch of different fields, and they all have the same shared style. So we'll select one of those fields. Now here's a quick tip. Because we click on the first name field, because we are selecting the group, it's not actually showing us any shared styles because the shared style is only related to the field itself, not the entire group. So one way you can do is to double click on the group and that takes you inside the group. Or another quick tip is to actually hold the command key when you're selecting things and that will take you directly to the object that your mouse is over or that you're clicking on. So now we can see over in our inspector we have that shared style shown. So we have the input field selected. Now, let's put a slightly blue tinge. Oh, that's red. Chuck a slightly blue tinge onto our input field. Uh, something like that. And then we'll change the border color to be a nice dark blue. Cool. Maybe we'll make the stroke thickness 1.5 just to give it a little bit of more oomph. And then we will, we'll leave the inner shadow as it is. So now we'll see 
as, bef as per before, our input field now has a little refresh icon. We'll hit that and voila, all of our input fields across all of our artboards have updated. So that is incredibly useful and incredibly powerful. I think that's a great place to leave this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a like. And if you'd like to learn anything else or know anything else about Sketch, please reach out to me on Twitter or leave a comment below. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye.